Hello everyone, I'm Anna Hollenrake. I work for Dream Reality Interactive and I'm going to talk to you today about being a game artist. I'm a senior artist and illustrator. Uh, I do a lot of concept art, 3D environment art, illustration. Uh, I, I like too many things, as will become clear. And just to prove that I'm not lying to you, uh, I've worked on a few bits and pieces with my time in the industry. So I've worked on the console and mobile uh, version of Magic the Gathering. Uh, I worked on this lovely little daydream VR game called Lola and the Giant, where I got to do the look and feel concepts, uh, the individual asset concepts, uh, as well as, oh, you can't really see it, but I swear it's a very moody, moody, thoughtful scene, um, uh, as well as actually defining the levels and then eventually building them in 3D and setting them up in engine as well. And the latest project uh, that I worked on was Adventure Time Pirates of the Enchiridion, which is coming out on console pretty soon. So I did a lot of the concepting and 3D modeling alongside there. And then I just do a lot of painting in my own time. It's a whole lot of stylized stuff. Like I tried doing all the gritty, miserable bits and pieces, but I just like bright colors way too much. Um, but today I'm going to talk about how I got into the industry and I think it's really important uh, to look at where I started because this has been a long time in the making. Uh, so if we take it back a little bit, when I first started doing digital art, uh, I was doing, I, I discovered the uh, fill tool on this piece, I think I was like 13, 14, uh, and I just would play around with stuff all the time, like I would just grab, I don't know, I think a sunburst image and just chuck it behind like the drawing. And it, it was just the most exciting time because I would just throw creativity at anything. Like I'd do fan art, uh, I'd write fan fiction. It was brilliant. I was having the best time. I can see you recording this. <laughs> <laughs> Shame me. Um, uh, but then, as I said before, uh, I got really into Fable 3 and I saw these paintings and I was like, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. And people do this. Like I'm on these websites where I can see people creating the stuff and it's, how do I do this? So I realized at that point that there are a fundamental uh, kind of, there's fundamentals even, uh, there's artistic fundamentals that underlie absolutely everything that are in these images from anatomy to perspective to the types of materials that are being used. So I went out and I did a lot of studies. I uh, would go down to the canal in my hometown. I would practice one point perspective because perspective is evil. <laughs> uh, I would do material studies. I would um, draw uh, like just bits of chicken. It was very odd. Um, I, I would just try and like, I remember I went down to like the butchers one day and I was just like, can I just have some chicken? Cause I need to like draw, draw something that's really like gross and shiny for an illustration project. They thought I was so weird. Um, but because of that, <laughs> uh, I really started to learn all of these artistic fundamentals. And then I went to university. So I was lucky enough to study uh, game art at De Montfort University. And then I also got into a bunch of uh, study groups. So I surrounded myself with a lot of people that were really, really passionate and dedicated. All of these, well, I don't know about DeviantArt, basically these two groups that kind of defunct now, but uh, ArtStation's been mentioned before. Uh, there are some really wonderful study groups. Getting into a community is super important. Because in that moment, I was not, I was not like my best self. <laughs> Uh, I had to mess up a whole lot. Like I really, really had to like surround myself with people that were all figuring things out uh, and kind of trying and failing at some points. And that's okay, that's part of the process, together. And so at university, I also started learning my 3D skills. For some reason, they made us make literal garbage just to reinforce how much we were like struggling. Like for that wheelie bin project, that was the first 3D model that I ever made. And I, <laughs> we had to source our own textures. So we had to go out into the streets of Leicester and just take photos of people's bins. We were so weird, like everyone was, we got the weirdest looks. But gradually, after we um, struggled through all of the um, literal trash that we had to make, uh, I started to understand it. It started to make sense. I could turn 3D forms in my mind. And I was beginning to make things that I really cared about. So this is the kind of stuff that I was making toward the end of third year. And so I came out of university and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was just like, oh, like, I like so many things. So uh, I think I'd just go over the kind of roles there are for game artists. Uh, does anyone know any specific roles? Are there any audience participation? Anyone? Yes, thank you. Concept art, that's one. Anyone else? Yep, yeah, uh, like, and there are so many that I had no clue about. 
Um, so yeah, concept artist. Uh, that concept art is a lot less glamorous than people realize. Like it's, I've done concepts that have gone that developed into full 3D models that have been on the back of napkins. Uh, it's much more gritty, but it's a whole lot of fun because you get to define the look of the world, the environments that you're in. Environment, oh, character artist. Uh, so you have, I've skipped that one there. Uh, so basically creating the 3D models for the characters. Environment artist, uh, so yeah, 3D environment pieces, set dressing the world, environmental storytelling is brilliant. VFX, so bring the world to life through explosions and rain and just making the world kind of not feel quite so static. And technical art, technical artists are wizards and I won't hear anything against that because they get to dig around in code and uh, no one really understands what they do, but it makes everything look lovely because they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, create shaders and um, they uh, create systems for the games. Like for example, if you have a forest and you have one tree model, they'll create something that offsets the color slightly just to make the world feel a little bit more diverse while saving on labor. So <clears throat> how did I figure out what I wanted to do? Well, as I said, I like too many things. So I became a generalist and I went into indie. Uh, but before I did that, I kind of had to do my time. So I was a data entry temp, uh, which was interesting. I was a barista, um, and all the while I was doing freelance. As I said, it took me a while to get into the industry, and that is normal, uh, and everything is a process. And then now, like after realizing that I like doing so many things, uh, I kind of ended up in senior art and doing kind of art direction. And so my day-to-day, -day, uh, for a little kind of overview, is, uh, for example, now in the kind of role that I have, I would chat to the designer to figure out their vision. And just as a tip, talk about feelings because a lot of the time people don't know exactly what they want. So if I, uh, for example, I'm talking to a designer and I'm like, what do you want this environment to feel like? Because they, language is difficult, but I think we can all kind of be like, oh yeah, I want it to feel wistful, like wistful or like melancholic. Melancholic is like a slightly desolate landscape that's got some really nice clouds and there's a single tree. Like you can kind of work from that and it's a really nice way to uh, develop visuals. Uh, I'll also paint and draw ideas to define characters, props and environments. Uh, I'll build 3D environment art. Uh, I'll place assets in the game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine and set dress, uh, which is, yeah, kind of making the world come to life. I'll plan sprints, and sprints are basically uh, what a lot of studios use uh, as a planning tool. So a sprint is two weeks of time, and people will figure out what's going to be achieved in that time. I'll respond to client feedback. Uh, I'll give feedback and uh, paint over other artists' work to kind of help course correct if there's something that isn't quite uh, going to plan. And create promotional images. Like, once again, concept art, very scrappy. Uh, a lot of the concept art that you see that's being put out by big studios is very much promotional art. It's much, much more uh, rendered. It's much more painted and much more detailed. So with all of this, like as people have said before, uh, I didn't intend to get to this point. I just kind of made the choices that made sense to me at the time. But looking back, uh, there's a lot of things I'd like to tell my past self. Uh, and this is one question that I get asked all the time, like, how do I find my art style? And it comes with time and practice. All of the art you're about to see is my art, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, my kind of art now is very uh, brightly colored because that's what I really love. Uh, but for example, I tried to do photo bashing and photo bashing is where you take existing photos and mash them up with uh, Photoshop brushes that act almost like stamps. So for example, they'll stamp leaves onto an image. I'll try to, I try to do Magic the Gathering style illustrations, but I'm not that good at like moody, dragony, kind of uh, aggressive, spooky stuff. It's just not, not for me. I did so many things, like this is all my stuff and it's completely all over the place, but it's just a, a process where you just have to try things out and fail and figure out what you like and what sings to you and what really kind of appeals to you and you can take on the things that you really care about by artists that you love. So yeah, listen to what makes you happiest because if you go and uh, you're like, okay, I'm gonna make realistic mechs because everyone says I should make realistic mechs, you may get hired to make realistic mechs and you will hate it and you'll just have the worst time. 
And then alongside that, like taking on things from other people, uh, I'd really love to tell my past self that comparison is the thief of joy. Uh, I am really, really proud of what I've achieved now, but I remember back when I was starting out, I had no idea how I get to the kind of point where I am, but I would just look at other people and be like, oh, they got this job, oh, they got uh, this role, they're doing this art piece of art and it's really interesting, but it's only going to bring you down. Uh, your highlight reel, uh, their highlight reel, uh, is gonna look a lot flashier because it's curated in comparison to your behind the scenes. And follow the fun, but you do have to have discipline. So I'm a big proponent of looking after yourself and not working yourself into the ground, which is my next slide. Um, but you do have to have discipline. So really good time management. <laughs> like I had a really bad habit of uh, procrastinating and procrastinating is more exhausting than doing the thing that you actually want to do. <laughs> uh, and so I'd say like take time off with intention, but also try to manage yourself with intention as well. And yeah, don't work yourself into the ground. I think, especially if you're at university, we have a really bad habit of uh, telling ourselves that uh, exhaustion and suffering for your art is really important, but I'm, I don't agree with that whatsoever. Uh, I think that we can get better as artists without like eating coffee for dinner. And ultimately, at the end of the day, create the worlds that you want to see because your voice is the most interesting thing that you can bring. And when you're being authentic to yourself and making the kind of art that you want to see, it's going to resonate with people. Me making these weird pastel stylized worlds resonates with both me and other people. And I'm so happy for that because it feels really good. And yeah, just, I mean, it's a bit cheesy to end on follow your heart. But, you know, uh, yeah, follow your heart, friends. I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening.